turn it back. Okay, welcome back. So what we're going to go over today is right now if I hit play, I have these bricks that spawn. I've got four of them. They're random colors. They have health. They don't interact physically with the ball yet. I'll get to that in a second. And um, yeah, so we'll actually make it so that they're not always one right next to each other like this. So let's go into our game manager script in MonoDevelop. And what we're going to do here, right now the way that we're creating things is we're only going to create four, uh, four bricks at any time. And right now we're checking a integer random between zero and two. What we actually want to do to make it so that we have some like empty spaces is let's do between zero and five. So that means it's going to be create an integer that's either 0, 1, 2, or 3. We have something to do if it's 0 or 1, but there's nothing for 2 or 3, which means that it's going to just skip over creating anything in that spot. So if I save this now and jump back into Unity, it's going to think for a second while it compiles. And if I hit play, I should see some spaces in my creation up here. So. There we go, I got three together. If I hit play again, I got just one. If I hit play again, I got two over here, one over there. So this is looking a lot more random, which is good. I got uh, four together, over here, over there. So it's nice and random now, which is good. Now, um, one thing I noticed is that we didn't actually add any physics to the bricks, so let's do that right now. So let's go into the prefabs. I'm going to grab a square brick and just pull it anywhere onto the scene. And I'm going to grab a triangle brick and just pull it anywhere onto the scene. And maybe over there. Okay, so now I'm going to choose a square brick here. Right now I have a sprite renderer, I have the color controller, and the health manager, but I don't have two specific things I need to add in order for it to interact with physics. So I'm going to go to add component, and I'm going to go to physics 2D. And I'm going to choose a box collider 2D for this. I'm going to essentially leave the box collider alone. If you zoom in really close, you can see this green line that represents the edge of the box, which is fine. It doesn't fit exactly, but that's OK. Uh, the next thing I'm going to add is, under Physics 2D, a rigid body 2D. In the rigid body 2D, I'm going to make it so that its mass is really big so that the ball doesn't move it around. So let's go with like a thousand. And I'm going to set its gravity scale to zero. I'm also going to uh, give it a few constraints. I don't want it to rotate. So I'm going to hit Z, uh, freeze rotation on Z. And I want to freeze its position on both the X and the Y axis. And Unity doesn't like doing this because it wants this to be static. But we actually want this to be dynamic. So we're going to leave that dynamic. Uh, OK. Now. Since we changed a prefab, we just changed this version of it in the scene. We didn't actually change the version of it that lives in the prefab folder. So to make these changes we just made apply to all of the square bricks, I'm going to go up here with my square brick highlighted and just click the Apply button. And now the square brick in the prefab has exactly what I just added. Now if you check my triangle brick here in the scene, I'm going to add Physics 2D. I'm not going to add a box collider, so I'll give it a box. Instead, I'm going to create a Polygon Collider 2D. And you can see this green line represents the edge of the box. And I could manipulate that if I wanted to. I'm also going to add another component, Physics 2D, Rigid Body 2D. I'm also going to make its mass very large, like 1,000. Its gravity scale is set to 0, so it doesn't fall. And I'm going to freeze its rotation position on the x and y axis. I'm going to apply these to my uh, my one that's in the prefabs. So if I delete these from my scene, I don't need them anymore. So I'll hit delete, hit play. Should get a random number of bricks spawning. Oh, that time it decided not to spawn any. Oh, maybe not. Oh, there we go. We'll fix that. Don't worry. So now it actually bounces like it's supposed to. Oh, it's not taking health away, which we'll deal with in a second. Uh, and it's not moving down once the ball hits the ground, but we'll deal with that in a minute too. Uh, okay, so 
let's go back into MonoDevelop here. And let's make it so that <laughs> let's remove this if condition here. Let's save that really quickly. So and let's also remove this number of bricks created. And now if I want it to be more likely to see a brick, I can just manipulate this number down. So if, like, if I change this number to three, then one fourth of the time, it should create an empty space. Now that doesn't mean one fourth of the time, every time it will, because there's some randomness to choosing the random number. So like there, in that case, it left an empty space way more than one fourth of the time. Hit play again. And that's a little more like what you'd expect. Okay, cool. So now let's set their health to be what it's supposed to be. And then let's also um, make it so that they lose health when the ball hits them. So let's go to our scripts here and open up your brick health manager. So uh, what we're going to do is in here, we've got its text, uh, we've got its health set to brick health, um, and then take damage. So it's going to uh, subtract one, uh, however much the damage to take is. So in here, we're going to add a new method that's going to be built into Unity, and we're going to call this void on collision exit 2D. She's looking for if it collides with something, not if it starts colliding, but once the collision ends, um, which is kind of important here, and then we're going to have a collision that needs to come in. So collision 2D, and we're going to call this other. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to say if other dot game object dot tag, which is the tag that's associated to the game object that is colliding with it, is equal to ball, then we're going to reduce the health by one. So we're going to do brick health. Actually, let's call it take damage. If I can spell it correctly. And then this needs an integer passed in, so let's just do one damage. All right, so save this. Let's jump back into Unity. It's going to compile for a second. And let's find the ball. Make sure that this has a tag of ball. So now if I hit play. So right now they all have 10. But once I hit it right there, it went down to 9. So let me see if I can bang shot it up on top there. There we go. So now it's taking damage like it's supposed to. All right, cool. Now, in the actual game, the bricks have the same health as whatever level you're on, however many times they've gone down. So in the game manager, we're going to create a uh, an integer which is going to monitor what level we're on. So we're going to do public int, and we'll just call this level. Now in the start method, we'll set level equal to 1. Uh, save this. Brick health manager in the start method. We'll set, um, actually, we'll have to create a, met, uh, a reference to the game manager here first. So let's do private game manager. And we'll call it lowercase g game manager. And then in the start method, we'll say that game manager equal to find object of type and the object that we're finding is the game manager and then we'll also say that brick health is equal to game manager dot level okay so what I did here so I created a reference to the game manager in the scene then I told it what the game manager is by finding an object of type game manager. And this is fine to do because I should only ever have one game manager in the scene. Then I set the brick health to be equal to whatever the game manager's level is. So now if I save this, if 
pop back into Unity. It's going to think for a second. I'll hit play. And now these have a health of 1 because the level is 1. They don't go away when I hit them yet, but we'll handle that in a second. Thank you very much, and have a great day.